Hello and welcome to today's EMBN show and we have an absolute epic, a very, very special edition of the show because one person who is truly embracing the current difficult situation is mechatronics engineer Ray Cook. Ray! I hear you've been having trouble with the locals. I sure have, they've been really irritating. I've been going round the village on my runs as I normally do, but they don't like it because it's locked down. So I won't be needing that anymore. Oh, so what are you going to do about it? Well, if I can't go out on the road, I'll have to bring a road into the workshop. Ah, oh, I like it. So if the mountains won't come to Mohammed, then Mohammed will have to go to the mountains. Right on, and that's what's happened right here. Engineers, what are we going to do? Yes, it's a rolling road and it's in the warm and it's cozy. That's what we're going to do. Uh, well, fair play, that is some mountain. But Ray, why didn't you just buy something for a couple of hundred quid which is ready to go off eBay? There must be thousands out there. Come on, this is something else. I tell you what, this has got so much kit on it and it's computerised and everything, because you know what I'm like and it's really, really good. In fact, it's so good, it will blow your socks off. So Ray has now bolted the direct hub rear drive bike, the Trek single track, to the jig. Uh, Ray, talk us through the basic setup procedure here. First of all, check she's solidly mounted. Yep, that's okay. Then we'll put the straps on. One strap at the back. There she goes. And what does that do exactly? Well, this enables me to set the weight because I'm not going to ride today, but I'm going to do some tests on this bike. Yeah. So I can set the weight up at 70 kilo ah, on the like, compressor. Like it, Ray, racing weight. Absolutely. So ready to roll? There we go. We're down there now. So, so there's now 70 kilos 70 loaded onto the system. And symmetrically loaded. Spot on there, so we're ready to roll. Now I'm really excited about this. Now in as much as we've ridden most of the main uh, motor brands from Shimano, TQ, Yamaha, Bosch, Specialized, and we know exactly how they feel on the hill, we don't actually know just how much power they produce. So I'm hoping that Ray's machine here in the background is gonna give us some real world data on how much power actually goes to the ground. We're rolling, let's go. And I've just put 70 kilos on the bike. I'm not riding today. We're just going to do a test on the motor. So I've used this. Here we go. Just show you again. That's no load. We put the rider's weight on. It's balanced and off we go. So I can see on here what's happening. Now the great thing about this is that Ray can actually put any rider weight on the system from a child weighing say 30 or 40 kilos up to a uh, a big rider who might weigh 120 kilos plus. Now obviously the key thing about this is now we can measure such things as the drain and battery, we can measure speed, I mean there's actually an infinite amount of things we can do with this machine and that's just on rider weight. Next up I'm going to run her up a hill, I'm going to put her on a two and a half percent hill which is a slight one, here we go. I'm going to put her on 5%, so listen hard folks, because you hear her drop down. And now we're going for a 7.5% hill. Yeah, she's struggling. I'm looking at the dials now, and I'm finding that the motor is losing 50% of its power by the time it gets to the back wheel. So that's a lot of warmth going somewhere. Now, the motor's off for a second, and it's just given me a time to think about the different things we can do with this rolling road. I mean, the tyres alone, we can try out comparisons of different tyre compounds, different tyre widths, and also the effect that has on battery capacity and also the speed of the bike. Um, but what I'm thinking is I actually need to be on the bike. Let's get the straps off and get you on it. in the last 12 months is about Zwift now. Um, the motor's now on and, and I can see a load of data here. But I'm sure that is the tip of the iceberg. However, what we really need to know is the performance of a mid-drive bike on this rolling road. Now I'd say this is a reco- What the? <laughs> what the? Ray, what's going on? Ray, what was that? I just put you uphill. Cry, what kind of gradient was that? 
It's mental. <laughs> this machine is mental. Oh my God. So we can actually do a comparison of different gradients. This is mental. This is absolutely mental. Oh, that's better. On the flat, 22Ks. Well, Ray's Rolling Roads, uh, it's certainly been worthwhile uh, bringing the mountains to Mohammed because I can now start thinking about all the different things we can try out on the rolling road, such as how much power is actually delivered to the rear wheel on the ground. We can look at the efficiency of each e-mountain bike motor. We can look at such things as rider watts versus uh, motor watts, the system balance. Uh, we can look at rolling resistance and of course we can look at the optimum cadence to be riding your e-mounted bike. So we can ride all those motors from Shimano to Bosch to Bro to Yamaha to TQ and we can give you guys some accurate information um, on the way these e-bike motors work. But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Ray, can we actually do all those things? You can and more. You can tune a rider to the bike and the bike to the rider with this machine. It's just going to be an eye-opener. It's a really good bit of kit. And I'm looking forward to having some of your special bikes down here to give them a run through. Right, time for a little bit of news. Well, kicking things off, we have a new bike for you and it is coming out from Commensal Bikes who are based out in Andorra and it is an absolute stunner of a bike. Now, it's a great video, if you haven't seen it, of Greg Williamson ripping this bike around in the woods, so you definitely need to check that one out. But going back to the bike, it has got all the latest kit on there. Shimano EP8 motor, 630 watt hour batteries. It's a 140 mil travel out back with a 150 mil fork up front, rolling on 29 inch wheels. And there is a load of good kit on there. The suspension is coming from Fox. You've got 36 up front and a DPX2 out back. Uh, it's got Maxxis tires on there, DT Swiss wheels, XT12 speed group set, and that signature model, that really flash you know, nice finished uh, bike is coming in a shade under 7,000 euros, 600 and 999 euros. So nice looking bike and great stuff coming from Commensal. Right, let's take a look at some stuff that's been going on on social. Checked out some cool stuff on Instagram recently and the man of many insane climbs on a standard mountain bike has got involved in e-bikes and yes, Ludo May has done this amazing climb and he's been simply blown away from what is possible on his e-bike. Now check this out. Now Brendog, now he's been pushing the limits when it comes to dirt jumping, but he's been dirt jumping on his e-bike, which is pretty interesting. And he's claiming a world's first here. He's doing a no-hander to one hand land and he hits the next takeoff with one hand still off the handlebars and proceeds to land with that. So it's a one hand takeoff to one hand lander, which is pretty cool. But I hate to steal your thunder, Brendog. I think Paul Roberts did this back at like Bike Show 98. I don't know if he pulled it, he definitely was trying it, but it's definitely super cool nonetheless. Nice one. And then we've got Drew Herbert here from Arizona. This is Super Drooper, and he is absolutely smashing up the style and going massive on his Levo SL here. That is a big, big hip jump. Nice. Now, a great way of supporting us here at EMBN is by checking out the EMBN shop. In the EMBN shop, you're gonna find loads of cool merchandise, hoodies, t-shirts, hats, masks, stickers, key rings, you name it, it is on the EMBN shop. So make sure you check that one out. As always, we've got a great week of content here for you guys on EMBN and kicking things off on Friday, we've got Steve checking out the 500 pound home build bikes that he's been preparing. They're all going head to head to see which one comes out on top. Then on Sunday, Steve again is taking a look at the world's most advanced e-mountain bike. And there's a load of cool stuff going on with that one. So make sure you check that one out. And then on Monday, we're heading into workshop to see all those common workshop mistakes that you can make working on your e-mountain bike. 
Right, it's time for a few comments and questions from last week's video. Well, in fact, last week's show where we looked at the new Vittoria battery saving tires. We've got a few comments coming in from those. Got this one from Craig Young. He says, hi guys, I'm running the e Mazda tires front and rear on my Cube and I'm very impressed with them so far. They're tubeless with the airline inserts. Keep up the good work and stay safe. Thanks a lot, Paul. Uh, thanks a lot, Craig, I should say. Um, yeah. GMBN, they run the Vittoria tire range and they do look pretty good to be fair. And uh, I think the e-bike versions with that battery saving tech is pretty interesting stuff. And I think you with your tubeless and the inserts, you've got a great setup there going on. I think, you know, inserts, especially on the rear is something we should definitely all be looking at for our e-bikes. Next up, we've got a comment from Play Whole Day. And he says for battery saving tires, Maxxis DTH case is closed. Now the Maxxis DTH is uh, an urban street skate park tire, which I don't think is gonna be that great out in the woods. Obviously, if you're just commuting or riding to work on pure tarmac, then that tire would probably work and they are very lightweight and very fast rolling. And I think you can pump them up to like 70 PSI. So it would be a very, very fast tire, but not a lot of fun if you're out in the woods, particularly in the UK at the moment. At the moment, it is absolutely plastered out there. Right, we've got a great comment here from Lee T M T B. He says, the seat adjuster coming from Anomaly, which we featured a couple of shows back, would get covered in British mud and uh, horrible stuff this time of year and probably seize up after a week in these current conditions unless you have some good mud guards. Now, I think the winter that we do have in the UK is pretty harsh and it probably is the ultimate test for any bike component. I definitely agree. But I really love the concept of that uh, adapter coming from Anomaly. It looks like great stuff and I think it would, would be really useful in the e-bike world. So let's see, let's get one on test and see how it fares. Right, we've got a couple of great entries coming in this week for Climb and Send of the Week. And kicking things off, we've got Paul here. He's out in New Zealand in Central Otago on his Trek Rail 9.8 and his friend on a white 160. He says this is Paul and Curly exploring their backyard high above Lake Hawaii. Uh, 1,350 meters climb. Um, and it is absolutely epic. I've watched this video already and I think you've got some amazing views and those ridge line trails are absolutely to die for at the moment. I think you definitely earned the descent after climbing up that mountain. Nice one. And next up, we've got Carson here. We featured on the show once before. He's on his 2019 Specialized Levo and he's in the Linga Longa Bike Park out in Perth, Western, uh, Western Australia. He says, found a, sneak, a sneaky send while having fun on the new ski, skills area here at the park. That looks like an absolutely epic gap there. Nice and smooth as well. Could become a bit nasty if you had to come up short and catch your back wheel on that ladder, but you cleared it with ease. Nice one. Right, it is time to head to where in the world to see where you guys have been riding your e-mountain bikes all over the place. And kicking it off, we've got this great shot coming in from Carlo. He's on a Scott Genius e-ride tuned. He's in great arm, Landudno. And that is an absolutely epic shot looking over towards Conway Mountains and then onto the Carnadu range for future fun rides. Great shot, absolutely epic view. And I think that sums up e-biking in that one shot. Right, we're moving over to Mesa in Arizona with Sean. He's on a Bulls E120, uh, Ecore Evo uh, out on the horse trail. Just finishing up the connection trail between his two favorite trails. And that bike looks really good, doesn't it? And that trail and that location, amazing. Look at that. Some cactuses there and everything. Right, next up, this is Rafael Melido. He's riding in an Orbea Wild FS M10 out in the Dominican Republic. Trails all over the Cuba, uh, having great day out on my bike. Look at that, nice, looks nice and dry there compared to uh, here in the UK at the minute. 
Got some horrible mud on the trails. And talking to the UK, we've got this great shot coming in from Ashley. He's out on a freezing cold ride on the East Sussex South Downs. Freezing fog. Uh, he's out on his Levo Comp. And we rode the South Downs a while back and the conditions were absolutely atrocious. I think I would have preferred it in that freezing fog rather than the driving rain, but an epic shot nonetheless. And moving on to another cold looking shot. This is Marcus on his high bike Hard 9 6.0. He's out in Norway, exploring the nearby mountains on his hardtail e-mountain bike, uh, trying to convince himself that he doesn't need a full suspension bike. So fair play to you. I think if the tracks are smooth, particularly on snow, then probably don't need that full suspension bike, but it might open up a few doors to you. And that is an absolutely epic shot. I love seeing where you guys ride all over the world. Don't forget, if you want to get featured, use the upload service to get those bikes into us here on EMBN. Right, a bit of a seaside shot here from Stephen. He's riding a specialized Levo out in Milford on Sea, Hampshire. Now I know that area, it's a pretty good spot. You might bump into Steve Gill down there if he's out on about on his e-bikes, keep an eye out for him. Um, he's uh, out on a big ride along the coastal paths, getting out of lockdown stress. Uh, and it changes regularly apparently due to all the coastal erosion. So you get a lot of landslips. It's quite sand based down there, isn't it? So yeah, nice looking bike that and a nice shot. That ocean actually looks pretty uh, inviting. All right, finishing off, we've got this one from Leroy. He's on his high bike or mountain up in the Stipper Stones in Shropshire, taking in the Winter Stones and making the last ascent of that trail. Nice looking bike and look at that view disappearing off into the background there. It looks like an amazing descent from high up on that hill. Nice. Okay, it's bike bolt time. You guys ready to see if you can get a nice or a super nice? Well, we've got some great entries in this week. First up, we have got this one in from Mike. He's out on the Isle of Skye on his high bike Exduro 2.0, getting in some essential exercise. Wow, that is an absolutely epic shot. Mountains in the background, snow, Isle of Skye, super nice. Next up, Stuart. Now I recognize this. I think it's one of the byways that I ride on my motorbikes. This is up in the Bath Hills. He's on a Levo Comp uh, with loads of custom parts on it. Me and my mate on a cold minus two early morning ride, trying to work off that Christmas uh, pudding. So been working hard on that one. I definitely recognize that shot. Epic sunset. And I think fair play for going out in those conditions, giving these super nices away. Another super nice. Whoa. So this is Martin here, and he's got a nice looking Kinevo here. He's out in Puddle Down Forest, another local spot to here. Um, heavily modified, the only thing being stock is the frame, the battery and the motor. Everything else has been chained, uh, changed. He's got the Zeb up front, removing that boxer off of the bike, so he's got the single crown on there. Different dropper, loads of custom parts. Very nice shot. Autumnal as well. Whew, Steve's gonna kill me, but I'm gonna give this one. Another super nice. Whew, we got some amazing shots. This is Craig. This is, uh, he's riding a cube stereo hybrid out in the Brecon Beacons. Third time out and he wanted to see how capable it was. And he's been able to smash up there up this big mountain on a wet and windy day. Never ever been able to get out there on his normal mountain bike. So really opened his eyes up as to what's possible. And there only, there's only one way for that shot. And again, I'm going to be out of super nices, but yeah, super nice. Ooh. The chili theme continuing on throughout this week's bike vault. This is Ian and he's got a Norco Bigfoot VLT fat bike, says so the hardtail. He's out in Northumberland Forest, Ontario, Canada. Haven't even looked at my trainer or Zwift since picking up this e-bike. E Loads of fun. And I'm liking those hand muffs on there. I know Steve gave me some grief re uh, recently about heated grips on a mountain bike, but I think those mitts are definitely gonna keep those hands uh, warm on those Sub-Zero rides. Whew, could this be a super nice streak? I think so, another super nice. Right, this is Gaz. He's out in Wind Latter Forest on his Scott E Genius, his custom build. First time since his total rebuild on his uh, bike. Oh, and he says his neck, so. Is this the same guy that broke his neck a while back, I'm wondering, I can't quite remember. But again, absolutely epic background. Nice shot, the bike looks perfect to me. Nice and low down uh, behind those mountains. Another super nice. 
Right, and the final shot from this week's Bike Vault is Christian here. He's got a Santa Cruz Bullet 2021. He's out in Denmark, Ulstrup. Out and about with a gang of e-bikes, decided it was time to take a shot of my new beast. And again, another snowy shot. Bike looks good, loving that color actually. I think it works really well with that Kashima uh, forks and seat post. Um, I'm gonna finish on a whole run of super nices. Uh, and I think that one definitely is a super nice too. But bike of the week for me. Ooh. Right, so bike of the week. Oh, well, I think Mike takes it here with his high bike X Duro 2.0 out on the Isle of Sky. Absolutely epic shot. We've got mountains in the background, a blue sky, and a big day out. But don't forget, if you guys want to send any pictures or videos into us here on the channel, use our upload service, and it could be you on next week's show. But that is it for this week's show too. Uh, let us know what you think about the new EMBN rolling road and all the latest news from this week's show too. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN and give us a find and a follow on social media. See you next week.